This is our next topic. We're going to look at minerals and rocks. It's still a geography topic, a form one geography topic. And remember, you can skip to a subtopic under minerals and rocks, which you probably are just interested in. So, uh, this topic, we are going to define minerals and rocks. Sticks. State the characteristics of minerals, classify rocks according to mode of formation, state the characteristics of rocks, and account for the distribution of major types of rocks in Kenya, explain the significance of rocks, and finally we are going to identify major types of rocks and their use within the local environment as part of our field study. So. Minerals, these are inorganic substances occurring naturally at or below the earth's surface. They are crystalline and have a definite chemical composition and physical properties. Rocks, this, a rock is a substance that is an aggregate of mineral particles that form the solid part of the earth crust. Rocks which contain metallic components are called also the keywords here is a rock is an aggregate of mineral particles. So we need to define minerals to know what minerals are when we are defining a rock. So characteristics of minerals, they have different degrees of hardness. Some materials, some minerals aggregate into distinct shapes. Varying number of element, elements. They have different abilities to allow light to pass through. They have specific color. For example, we know gold is shiny yellow, while copper is brown. They have different surface appearance when they reflect light. Minerals have different textures. They also have tendency to break along certain lines or cleavage. Different densities, some minerals conduct electricity while well, others don't. For example, copper does conduct while well, diamond doesn't. Some can be pressed into different shapes while others can't. They differ in streak, that is the color that a mineral leaves when it is rubbed against a hard surface. So we're going to classify them according to the mode of formation. There are three types of rocks, igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and metamorphic rocks. This is the juicy part of this topic. You need to understand this clearly, the differences. So it's easy, let's get in. Igneous rocks, they are formed when molten material from the earth's interior cools and solidifies on or beneath the earth's surface. And we have two types, intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks. So intrusive igneous rocks, these are rocks formed when magma cools and solidifies below the earth's surface. They have a coarse texture as a result of slow cooling, giving minerals more time to form large crystals. And the, these are the intrusive uh, igneous rocks. We have hyperbisol, which is an intrusive igneous rocks which are near the earth's surface. We have the plutonic rocks, intrusive igneous rocks which are deep below the surface. So let's let's get back a little bit so for understanding. So these are rocks. The baseline is Igneous rocks form when molten material from the earth's interior cools and solidifies on or beneath the earth's surface. So intrusive igneous rocks, we have hyperbiso and plutonic rocks. Let's look at their difference. So intrusive rocks, they form and solidify below the earth's surface. Hyperbiosal rocks, a baseline below the earth surface, and these are near the earth surface, where the plutonic 
they are deep below the earth's surface. And that's the difference. Extrusive igneous rocks, these are rocks formed when lava solidifies on the earth's surface. I hope you've seen the difference between extrusive and intrusive. Extrusive is on the earth's surface, while intrusive is below the earth's surface. And they are fine textured due to fast cooling, giving minerals less time to collect, gather to form large crystals. And they are of two types, volcanic ejecta. These are extrusive igneous rocks formed in the following ways, when ash and lava ejected from the underground as they fall on their surface. When dust and ash ejected settle on the ground and get compressed to form a rock. Example, tough. Lava flows. Extrusive igneous rocks formed when basic lava flows over a considerable distance then cools and solidifies. And we have these examples, basalt and obsidian. So we look at a table that might help us to spot the difference. Here it is. We have intrusive rocks, igneous rocks, we have hyperbasal, we have plutonic rocks. Extrusive igneous rocks, we have volcanic ejecta and lava flows. So, we've tackled one type, so let's look at sedimentary rocks. These are rocks formed when particles of other rocks are laid down and compressed into layers or when plant and animal remains are buried and compressed and compacted. And we have the types, mechanically formed, organically formed, chemically formed. So, as the name suggests, mechanically formed sedimentary rocks are formed when weathered, igneous, or metamorphic rocks are deposited and compacted. Organically formed sedimentary rocks are formed when animal and plant or animal remains are buried, compressed, and compacted. Do we have examples called carriers? You can see them. Chemically formed sedimentary rocks. These are formed when materials dissolved in water chemically react forming new substances then water evaporates leaving layers of these salts so these are carbonates sulfates chlorides ion stones so let's look at a table again to see the different the summary of these types of sedimentary rocks so we have examples there mechanically we just have sandstone and shale Organically, we have chalk and limestone, we have ironstone, we have diatomite, we have coal. Chemically formed, we have carbonates, sulfates, chloride, silicates, ironstones. And finally, metamorphic rocks. These are rocks which have changed their physical appearance and chemical properties as a result of subjection to great heat and pressure. So you can see granite is a type of, um, we see granite, we see gneiss from granite, slate from clay, marble from limestone, uh, quartzite from sandstones. See the force involved in metamorphism is compression. And so, we have already covered the characteristics of rocks under the specific uh, topics. So, distribution of major types of rocks in Kenya. Eastern Kenya, the major rocks are metamorphic rocks. Marble in parts of Machakos, volcanic rocks in Yata, Yata Latu and Kapiti Plains. Sedimentary rocks, limestone rocks used in Bamburi for cement manufacturing. So let's see what next. In the coastal region, we have major rocks, uh, sedimentary rocks. This is because particles from the ocean or other rocks and remains of plants and animals are laid down 
and compressed into layers or buried and compressed and compacted forming sedimentary rocks so for example we have the bamburi where cement is manufactured from limestone these are volcanic rock they are vo volcanic rocks in savo reaching groundwater resources so let's look at other parts northern and northeastern region dominated by sedimentary sand there are volcanic rocks in Mount Masabit. So oh, we, we can see Rift Valley and Kenya Highlands dominated by volcanic rocks. I think this is obvious. There is uh, there are volcanic mountains over there. In the Rift Valley in the Kenyan Highlands Islands. The Lake Victoria Basin, granite and gneiss dominated western Kenya. Where they form rocks called granitic tors, common in Kisi, in those regions. Sedimentary rocks deposited by rivers, Nyando, Nzoia, Ayala, and Sondu. Significance of rocks. Rocks weather to form soil, which is important in agriculture. Form aquifers, which store groundwater, water which form springs, which form rivers and wells, which provide water for domestic and industrial use some rocks are sources for building materials phosphate and nitrate rocks are used to make fertilizers used in agriculture granitic tours in of western kenya and high volcanic peaks such as those of mount kenya are a tourist attraction which brings foreign exchange pumice is used as a scrubbing stone a rock such as coal is used for fuel Is used as fuel for heating, smelting of iron, and thermoelectricity generation. We've come to the end of our topic today. And remember, you can read more on this topic from the Geography app on your Google Play Store. Our next topic is mining. Thank you.